Good morning. In some future age, historians will look back at the century just past, and they will need to answer a perplexing question. How did the 20th century give birth to such marvelous technology, to computers and scanning tunneling microscopes, while simultaneously advocating scientific theories which deny causality and think of matter as existing in an indeterminate state? My own personal answer to that question is that the real heroes are the experimentalists. The mathematical formalism of quantum mechanics is mostly a generalization from experimental data. And it was those scientists who, ded who were dedicated to fact, to practical reality, whose experimental genius made advancement possible in spite of, not because of, the standard theory. I think we all remember New York University physicist, physicist Alan Sokol, who four years ago was able to patent for a quantum theory of human affairs. A glimpse of Wolfgang Pauli promoting a new idea of reality which unites science with religion into a new whole. A glimpse of Niels Bohr who wanted complementarity taught to children in elementary schools and to be applied to psychology and anthropology. A glimpse of Werner Heisenberg who hope that the results of quantum physics, quote, will exert their influence upon the wider fields of the world of ideas, just as the changes at the end of the Renaissance transformed the cultural life of the succeeding epochs, unquote. Indeed, whom are we laughing at when we question the existence of a particle between two observations? Whom are we laughing at when the assertion that a particle goes through one slit or the other leads to contradictions. Whom are we laughing at when we demand the instantaneous change in state of two correlated particles separated across the ends of the universe? No one laughed when two experimenters recently used a scanning tunneling microscope to create a quantum corral of atoms and reflect the state of one atom placed at one focal point to the other. I don't think anyone yet quite knows why this occurs, but I doubt it will be explained by ghost-like particles which act in an a-causal manner. Lewis Little is not here to change the mathematical formalism of quantum mechanics, nor is he here to laugh at the quantum theory's founders. He is here for one reason and one reason only, to provide a rational basis for the understanding of quantum phenomena. Dr. Little studied at Brown, at Princeton, and at New York University. For 30 years, he struggled with standard theory before he arrived at his own theory of elementary waves. Dr. Little's theory has waves which are real objects, particles which have a real existence, and they both act with causal efficacy in a local manner. It took one brilliant insight to make these things possible. One thought, one idea, one thing that had not been considered before. A 30 minute question period has been allocated at the end of the talk because the theory involves many aspects. I'd ask that you hold your questions until the end unless something is absolutely not clear. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Lewis Little who will present his key ideas of this revolutionary quantum theory.